and welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com join me today in the making of the karen one pound yarn ball proudly made in the us of a in washington north carolina before we can enjoy this leading brand of yarn the fibers are dyed and spun into yarn strands in another location in the united states before even coming to the karen yarns factory they come in tightly wound spools which require processing before you'll recognize it as the Karen one pound yarn ball. Now look carefully, the spool yarn appears to be thin but it needs to be brought to light before crocheters and knitters can enjoy this yarn. Here, the operator is loading white spools even though red spools are already loaded. They're actually in fact changing the colors of the yarn in mid process to avoid setting up the machine from scratch. There are three spools per conveyor and the process is really quick. Each of the three spools per conveyor are actually tied to each other and when one spool runs out it automatically pulls the next spool without having the machine to stop. The demand of the yarn by the public is too great for these machines to be stopped during a shift. Did you just see that? The operator just grabbed the spool and the tied strings together as she lifted it to put the new spool underneath. The spools need to stay in order to prevent tangling. The strand that she is grabbing is the inside strand of the spool that is tied to the outside strand of the next spool. If you have a knot inside your ball, chances are it's the industrial spools ending from one to the other. As we move further down the machine, you can see other spools are being unwound and fed into the machine at a super fast speed. Look carefully, do you see the strands flying up? Most likely not. Let me show you a better view. In another machine, you can see it clearer when processing white yarn. Look how fast that is unwinding those spools. Now that the cones are loaded, the strands travel up over the aisle and then down onto the processing conveyor. The machine lays down the yarn in a circular formation onto the conveyor. The machine is timed to stop and start based on the winding process on the other side of the line. The strands need to be brought to life with a heavy blast of steam. The thin strands will immediately expand. You can see the difference of the yarn thickness from one side of the steamer to the other. Now that it's all puffed up, it's going to be slightly damp and needs to be dried. So the next machine is the machine that dries the yarn before rolling into a yarn ball. Once through the dryer, the yarn is on a direct course to the final ball winding process. Due to yarn tensions, each of the conveyor moves separately to prevent the strands from moving too fast or too slow to the winder. The winders have a really wide diameter and it is wound to the yarn spool very tightly. The machine is timed to rotate a set number of times per cycle. Winding it tightly allows the winding process to give an accurate yardage and weight to the yarn ball. You can see that each one of the conveyors are working independently. When the winding stops, the conveyor still moves forward to get ready for the next cycle and stops when the strands are detected at the end of the conveyor. The operator cannot remove these tightly wound balls on their own. The machine ejects forward and pushes them almost all the way off. They remove the ball and then set on the conveyor while resetting the spool at the same time to be ready for the next spin cycle. They work down the line as each one of the winders work together. Once the operator is done, they will begin the winding cycle once again. Did you notice that the interior of the yarn ball collapsed when it was taken off the winder? The tightly wound balls have a big diameter so that when it's removed from the winder, the yarn relaxes and the tension is released to the inside of the ball. The yarn ball now resembles a tin can. It needs one more process to make it look more appealing as you will see it on the store shelves. 
The yarn ball goes through a space of the machine that is too small. This causes the ball to compress and roll at the same time. This makes the center of the balls pop outward to give it the classic look of a yarn ball. The ball is perfectly shaped and ready to be labeled. The automatic labeler lifts the ball up and secures the ball band around the ball and then moves it forward down the line. The yarn ball is now ready to be packaged and heads down the line where the yarn is bagged to protect it during transport and then placed into a box. The yarn is now sent to the warehouse and when the storers order the yarn, it's now picked out, wrapped and ready to ship. It's now ready and waiting for a truck to bring it to a store near you. So that's been pretty cool. So okay, now that you've seen how it's done, let's examine the yarn ball knots as it's a pet peeve. So why can there be more than one knot in a finished yarn ball? It's an established policy within the yarn industry that multiple knots are acceptable within a yarn ball. This is done to prevent excessive waste and honestly perfectly good yarn from ending up in a landfill. Higher waste by the manufacturer means that the finished yarn balls must be higher priced and to make up for the cost of materials, labor and handling of yarn that is considered a waste. Multiple knots get into a ball at the spinning process before it's wound to the final ball like you've seen earlier. The process of the spinning is extremely quick and sometimes the fibers break. The industrial spools are wound by the weight. Should a strand break, the operator reties the strand and the machine continues to wind the spool until it hits its target weight. So while I understand that knots in a yarn ball can be a pet peeve, we have to remember that the yarns are made up of fibers that are spun together. To guarantee a ball without knots will create excessive waste and will drastically change the retail prices of the yarn to make it unaffordable. At the end of the day, consumers want to be able to afford the yarn and in today's society, we need to cut our waste and be more environmentally conscious.